Smoke alarms that are properly installed and maintained clearly save lives. And so with that in mind, I'm here to introduce Fire Chief Ron Blackwell. Chief Blackwell is going to announce some new community partners in the continuation of our smoke alarm initiative. Chief Blackwell. Thank you, Brad. Good morning. Uh, back in uh, 2011, uh, the city experienced a number of fire deaths that caused us in the fire department uh, to, pa to pause and reflect on those things that we can do, should do, had been doing that could help us reduce or eliminate fire deaths here in our city. Uh, from those meetings, Project Smoke Alarm was <coughs> developed. Uh, people in the department thought it would be important for us to get together with members of the community or businesses in the community that could help us provide smoke alarms for people who don't have or have smoke alarms that did not work. Uh, from those meetings, our initial partnership involved three organizations, uh, the Schofield Auto Group, Interstate Battery, and the local uh, Kids Safe Coal Coalition here in Kansas. Uh, since that time, uh, we continue to try to identify ways to reduce fire deaths. Many of you know there were 11 fire deaths here in, in Wichita uh, this year. But I'm here today and very pleased to announce that the number of uh, businesses or organizations involved in our partnership is increasing uh, by two. The Shelter Insurance Company and Tyco Simplex Grinnell uh, have both stepped forward to help us in our effort to reduce fire deaths here in the city. And I'd like to ask uh, Jamie Bucura, to, to join me here at the podium, and Aaron Westerman. Jamie is with Shelter Insurance, and Shelter has very generously uh, offered $1,000 to be used to purchase uh, smoke alarms or smoke alarm batteries for those people here in the community. And Aaron Westerman of Ty Tyco Simplex Grinnell uh, is here with a very generous donation of 250 smoke alarms. I'd like to provide uh, either or both of you gentlemen an, an opportunity to speak. Okay. Jamie, thank, thank you. you very, very much. Really appreciate it. And you, Aaron, appreciate it as well. Um, we just wanted to, we heard about the program um, and the need, and obviously so many need-based programs go unfunded or underfunded. Uh, Jody O'Kadies is married to a Wichita, proud Wichita Fire Department member, Jose O'Kadies, and she got us on it. Um, shelter insurance companies and the agents in the Wichita area were very happy to um, get some money together, especially around the holidays, and help out with the program. So we could help people put stuff back together when bad things happen, and we feel like you know preventing maybe a loss of life um, was even a better way to help out in the community. So thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you. Um, Simplex Grinnell is excited to uh, to be able to offer the Wichita Fire Department. Um, an opportunity to help protect the citizens of Wichita. Um, the do the no donation that we have was provided to us by First Alert Smoke Detectors, so we want to appreciate them as well. Uh, Tyco Simplex Grinnell has been in the Wichita community for well over 50 years, and uh, we're dedicated to life safety, whether it's in a commercial situation or it's um, residential. So we're, we're pleased to be able to offer this donation. Thank you both. Okay. I had asked uh, our fire marshal prior uh, to my coming down, Brad Crisp, to just get a quick snapshot of fires on Christmas Day and, and Christmas Eve. And as you know, we in the fire department work throughout the year to reduce or prevent fires. But I thought it was interesting that back in uh, 2011, on Christmas Eve, uh, there was a residential fire that day. And then again in uh, 2010, on Christmas Day, there were two house fires. And those things all go to uh, highlight, highlight the need uh, for constant vigilance and attention to home fire escape planning. Uh, people should plan. Think about what you're going to do if there's a fire in your house. Uh, too often people assume it's my house, I'm going to know what to do, I can get out. It's always a good idea to practice. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. <coughs> Chief, how many fire deaths were there in 2011? 2011? 2011? There, were, there were eight. Eight, eight. in 2011. Is, and I know you said 11 this year. Mm -hmm. Have we had that many ever before? They, we, we've had as many as 18 uh, back in, in, in the late 70s. Uh, generally, from year to year, uh, we average 
four or less than four. And of course, any death is, is one too many. But as we uh, uh, go back and critique and take a look at what happened in terms of what was the cause of fire, what actions those who died may have taken or not taken, we seem to always come back to the need for there to be early warning, early alert uh, to the fire so that you can get those precious seconds to get out of there, hence the, the smoke alarms and, and the very generous donations we're receiving today. And Chief, when you, when you obviously you just said, you know, anytime there's a fire death, it's one too many, but when you see the numbers like they are now today, mm -hmm. you know, what, what is your reaction when you see that high of a number? Well, uh, the, the initial reaction is, is generally always disappointment. Uh, I know, as, as I, I might have mentioned earlier, many people in, in the fire service take any death personally. I know uh, our fire crews do, and the people in the fire prevention division seem to really take those especially hard and are constantly asking themselves, what are we doing? What could we be doing uh, to eliminate the, these things altogether? So. Uh, we have what we believe is a uh, effective fire prevention program, but there's always ways to improve, and, and we think we can improve through uh, increased use of smoke alarms. I believe this was touched on earlier, not in this presentation, but uh, earlier this month um, or last month, about the number of the 11 fatalities that have been linked to either um, no smoke alarm system in the home or it wasn't working or you haven't been able to confirm that it actually went off, mm -hmm. was operating at the time of the fire. How many of those 11 fall under, those, under that category? Did, did not have or were not working? Right. I, I don't know. Do you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the fatality numbers, now remember we had four in one fatality right. and we weren't able to establish that a smoke alarm was working in that one. Uh, so if you extract that one, uh, that leaves the six fatalities and in half of those. So in three of the homes, we weren't able to verify that a smoke alarm was working. Uh, in two of the three, they weren't even present. So in two, okay, so it, six alarms, right? Six structure fires, right? Six structure fires, not counting the one with the four fatalities. Six in all. Okay, so there, there's six structure fires, including the one with the four fatalities, because the four adds to the 11, right? And that right. makes it confusing. Okay. Sure. In two of those homes, there was a, a smoke alarm present, and it did activate. At some point in time during the fire, we were able to verify that it activated. In the rest, it either was not there, or, or in one case, uh, where we had the, the gentleman who had committed suicide out in the front driveway, it wasn't really relevant. It was not a factor. Yeah, it wasn't a factor in the fire. So in two of them, they were present and they were working in the remaining four, they were not. But one of them wasn't relevant, so it was actually three. So Have I thoroughly the, confused you? That's okay, no. Okay. In the two where the smoke alarm was working, mm -hmm. how many people died? In the one in each. One. Yeah. So <clears throat> nine deaths because of no, either no smoke alarm or it wasn't working. Or you couldn't confirm that it went off during the fire? Well, <laughs> 10, actually, because the, the one gentleman who had committed suicide in the front driveway wasn't inside the structure, so the smoke alarm wasn't, wasn't, relevant, wasn't relevant in that case. So there'd be 10 deaths where a smoke alarm could have made a difference. That makes sense. Okay. And then in, in two of those, there was a smoke alarm present, but unfortunately, uh, for factors beyond anybody's control, they, they weren't able to make it out. Do you, do you think when people see what happens, especially with the one with the four people, mm -hmm. that it makes a difference? Do you think people go, oh my gosh, I better check my smoke alarm? It absolutely does. Uh, in, the, in the days following the fatality on Goebel, the four fire fatality on Goebel, uh, we had 185 requests come in, in in just a matter of a few days. Uh, and, and so it was clear to me that people were paying attention, they were thinking, about their families and about their home and uh, the, the smoke alarm initiative is available for those folks who can't afford one or don't have one and need one or perhaps aren't able to climb up on a ladder and, and check the smoke alarm themselves or change their battery <laughs> and, and we're here along with our community partners to help provide that service. How can people get be a part of that? What, where should they call? Right. There's a number of ways people can contact us. They can call 268-4441 
Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, uh, and, and get on the list. They can send us a note on Facebook, and we'll honor that request. They can also visit our website at wichita.gov and click on the fire department link, and they can submit an email through our website, and we can get them on the list. It says wichita.org. Should be wichita.gov. Did I put a word? Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Before I send that out via email, it will say .gov. Brad, what kind of a difference do you think these 250 smoke alarms and the check for the $1,000, what kind of a difference do you hope that will make or what will it It's going to make a huge difference. In our initial smoke alarm initiative, which we kicked off in 2011, we received about 350 smoke alarms and about 500 batteries. We've depleted that entire supply. So there's 350, potentially 350 structures out there that are protected now that weren't over the last couple of years. Uh, with, with this donation and with the $1,000 uh, from Shelter Insurance, we're going to be able to purchase hundreds of more smoke alarms. We continue a partnership with Allstate, uh, let me get this right, Interstate All Pack Batteries. They're supplying us with 9-volt batteries to replace. And so we're looking at, at the potential of another five to 600 smoke alarms and another five to 600 residents out there who can't afford one or don't have one or need help installing one, uh, providing that level of, of security for them in their home. Is it mostly the older homes that don't have them or is it? No, it's everybody. Yeah, the, the problem with smoke alarms is you know everybody has to have one. That's a city ordinance. They're required to be installed the problem with smoke alarms is that you have to maintain them. You have to put fresh batteries in them and you need to replace them every 10 years. And it's just one of those things that we kind of forget about replacing. We think since we've got them, they're good forever and they're not. Dust gets in there, bugs get in there, they just, the wear and tear of, of being present all the time. Uh, and they need to be replaced about every 10 years. And also, unfortunately, at times, smoke alarms become a nuisance because we burn something in the kitchen, you know, the toast or whatever and uh, people take them down or take the battery out or they start chirping because the battery is getting low and they think it's malfunctioning. They disarm it or disable it thinking, well, I'll get to that Monday or I'll get to that this weekend. And then, you know, ball games and kids and things come up and, and people forget. So this is a great opportunity for us to continue to remind people that those things are important. Smoke alarms save lives and you need to maintain them and have them and have a plan to get out when they go off. So the 250 smoke alarms that are being done, they're from First Alert, did I hear that correctly? Tyco, Simplex, Grinnell. Right. But and then they, you guys receive them from First Alert. First Alert. Right. Yeah. How much does this get cost? It, it varies. Um, you can purchase them anywhere from about $8 to about $25. Um, we encourage folks to, to try to purchase the 10-year lithium battery, if at all possible, but those are kind of of costly uh, smoke alarm if properly installed and maintained doesn't matter if it costs eight dollars or twenty five dollars they all work <laughs> you just have to maintain them Fred talk about that cost and what potentially <coughs> it does in return I guess if it goes off properly and saves lives I guess. The, they all function primarily the same there's two different types there's photo electric and ionization smoke alarms and and they both have their strengths and weaknesses um, the cost really has more to do with the 10-year lithium battery than it does with the functionality of the smoke alarm. They're all designed to detect the byproducts of combustion. So whether it costs $8 or $25 really doesn't matter. It's uh, the 10-year the lithium battery, is, it's kind of a convenience factor. So you may not have to climb up the ladder every you know, six months or eight months to replace the battery. That's really kind of where the cost price comes in, cost difference. But eight dollars is worth saving a life. Absolutely, you can't put a price on saving somebody's life. Um, if it, whether it's an eight dollar smoke alarm or donating blood to the American Red Cross for um, the fire department, for the fire department, <laughs> boot fire. Seriously? You know, seriously, no, I'm serious. You you donate blood one time every what three months, and you can save three people's lives. Come on, that's cheap. Uh, the cops are gone, right? These guys, oh. Yeah, oh, they're still, yeah, yeah, they're, they're still here. That don't matter. That's true. No, seriously, eight dollars is very cheap insurance. Smoke alarms don't sleep. If you install them and you maintain them, they're on duty twenty four seven, and they'll go off in the middle of the night when you're not awake, and they'll wake you up and allow you time to get out. So it's a that's a pretty good investment, and they're required. 
you don't have one, can you be fined? Technically, yes. Yeah, the ordinance does provide for fines, yeah. Yeah, but we don't like to add insult to injury, typically. Um, we do get into a bit of an enforcement mode in rental properties, like triplexes, fourplexes, apartment complexes. The property management is required to maintain those and have those working. And so if we make a fire and we identify a number of them that aren't, we will have a discussion with the management to get those things operational again. We usually don't have to go into enforcement mode, though. They usually see the value of smoke alarms, especially when something has happened. Are you guys surprised or frustrated or whatever that in this day and age we are still talking about needing to have a smoke alarm in a home or a trailer or whatever? I mean, right. you've been talking about this for years and years and years. Yeah, it, it is a bit frustrating. It, I kind of use the analogy of, of uh, seatbelts, right? Seatbelts have been required and been available for a very long time, and there's still people out there who don't use their seatbelts. Seatbelts save lives. Smoke alarms save lives. They've been available for a very long time. They've been required since the 1970s in homes uh, built in the state of Kansas and also in the city of Wichita. Uh, they clearly save lives, but they do require maintenance. And so it is frustrating when we make a fire and there's not a smoke alarm present or uh, the batteries have been taken out or they've been disabled in, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it takes a tragedy to get people's attention, and that's the last thing that we want. We want people to be thinking about this in a proactive way and what they can do. Easy steps takes 20, 30 minutes to put one up. Easy steps to prevent the loss of life or possible injury in the event that a fire does happen. Fires happen. We unfortunately can't prevent all of them, so when a fire happens in your home, give yourself a chance. Give yourself an opportunity to know that it's happening, to be able to get out with your loved ones. Call 911, close the doors behind you, please, and uh, let the professionals come out and deal with the emergency.